Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Dragon's Fire starter deck. First off we'll take a look at the deck list and play a game with the deck without making any changes to it out of the box. And then afterwards we'll gradually upgrade the deck into a sweet dragon deck. And then we'll play some games with the fully upgraded deck as well. So let's dive right into it here. Dragon's Fire is a mono red deck with a small dragon sub theme that we will then amplify as we upgrade the deck. At 1 mana we've got 3 copies of Shock as a 2 damage burn spell. At 2 mana we've got Goblin Instigator, making 2 1-1 one, one goblins essentially. We've got Kargan Dragon Rider, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, gains flying if we control a dragon. We've got Sure Strike as a combat trick, since we have a lot of high power, low toughness creatures. So backing those up with Sure Strike, giving plus 3 plus 0 and First Strike, will not only help us get in a lot of damage, but also make sure our low toughness creatures can survive. And we've got two copies of Vaishino Pyromancer, great burn card, two mana for a 2-1, deals two damage to target player or planeswalker when it enters the battlefield. Then we've got Ona Kyogre, one of those high power, low toughness creatures that could get backed up by a sure strike, three mana for a 4-2. We've got Pyromantic Pilgrim, three mana for a 3-1 with haste, so can hit pretty hard if the opponent doesn't have any blockers out. Then we've got one copy of Spitflame as one of our rares, 3 mana for an instant, dealing 4 damage to target creature. And then whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control, we can pay a single red mana to return Spitflame from our graveyard to our hand. So great synergy with all the dragons we have in the deck. Then we've got 3 copies of Havoc Devils, 4 mana for a 4-3 creature with Trample, so also plays well with combat tricks like Sure Strike. We've got two copies of Charging Monster Sword as a very powerful 5-drop, 5 mana for a 5-5 five five with Trample and Haste, so a great uncommon. Moving on, we've got one copy of Demanding Dragon as another one of our rares, 5 mana for a 5-5 five five dragon with Flying, and when Demanding Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage to target opponent unless that player sacrifices a creature, and if they don't have any creatures to sacrifice, then they're forced to take 5 damage, so it's kind of as if the Demanding Dragon had Haste. Then we've got two copies of Sparkton Dragon, 5 mana for a 3-3 dragon with flying, and when Sparkton Dragon enters the battlefield we can pay 2 and a red, and then if we do we get to deal 3 damage to any target. So at 5 mana the Sparkton Dragon is not too exciting, but if you can get to the late game and play it for 8 mana, then it becomes a lot more appealing. Then we've got one copy of Burning Sun's Avatar, 6 mana for a 6-6 creature that when it enters the battlefield deals 3 damage to target opponent or planeswalker and 3 damage to up to 1 target creature. So the effect is somewhat similar to Sparkton Dragon, but we get it for 6 mana instead of 8 mana and we get a much bigger body attached to it. Then we've got two copies of Fiery Finish, 6 mana for a sorcery dealing 7 damage to target creature. Pretty expensive removal spell, but every now and then you need to take care of something big. Then we've got Lathless Dragon Queen, a great payoff card for playing a bunch of dragons. 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six legendary dragon with flying, and whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 5-5 five, five around the dragon creature token with flying, and for 1 and a red, dragons we control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, which is a nice fire-breathing ability if we control multiple dragons. Then we also have two copies of Volcanic Dragon, 6 mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer with haste. And then last but not least, one copy of Meteor Golem, 7 mana for a 3-3, but when it enters the battlefield we get to destroy target and all land permanent and opponent controls, so it can even get rid of enchantments, which otherwise Reds struggles with. And then 25 basic mountains. So that's the deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand's not looking great. Uh, don't have any creatures to combine with a sure strike, so doesn't do much at the moment. And uh, Sparktongue Dragon and Fire Finish are both pretty expensive cards. Sparktongue not great at 5 mana. So I think we'll mulligan. Alright, this is a bit better. And we'll bottom the Sparktongue since we would rather draw land so we can get to 5 mana for Monster Sword. So we get to play turn 2 Goblin Instigator, turn 3 Onake Ogre, and then hopefully turn 5 Monster Sword. Up against what looks like maybe a Merfolk deck. Yep, turn to Silvergill, revealing Kumena Speaker. Luckily, the Instigator matches up pretty nicely against the Silvergill. But if we don't draw a few removal spells, this matchup is going to be difficult. Alright. The Goblin's holding off the Silvergill for now. 
Let's play our Onake Ogre. Doesn't match up all that well against the Komena Speaker. They're one drop trading for our three mana creature. But we can back it up with a Sure Strike. It's gonna be a Jungle Born Pioneer, making more Merfolk. So the ground's getting pretty stalled here. Opponent attacks us with the Komena Speaker. I don't think we're interested in double blocking with our 1 1s. And don't really want to trade for Onake Ogre quite yet. Alright, another Sure Strike. So now I think the play is going to be to just pass a turn and keep up double Sure Strike. And try and trade off Sure Strikes for some of their Merfolk essentially. Do have to keep River Herald's Boon in mind. Opponent could put some plus one plus one counters on their Merfolk at instant speed. Opponent attacks with everyone, so let's uh, make some blocks here. So 1-1 one, one token on Silvergill would be a good block, on a Kyogre on Merfolk token would be a good block. So if they go for a River Hell's Boon, we can still Sure Strike. But the problem is, our opponent gets to use one River Herald's Boon, and we're going to be forced to use two Sure Strikes to make this trade better. So I don't actually love blocking like this necessarily. I think I'd rather still block the Onake Ogre on Kumina Speaker here, and uh, we'll see if they want to use the Boon here. Alright, so there's a Boon, kind of as expected, so that's fine. And now we'll use Sure Strike to trade for Silvergill, and Sure Strike to trade for Kumina Speaker. Right, get on tap, draw Havoc Devils. Three toughness blockers, pretty nice here. So, do we want to trade Onake Ogre for Kumena Speaker? Not necessarily. We'll just play Havoc Devils for now. Pass a turn. Alright, Water Trap Weaver can tap down the Havoc Devils. So now we get to maybe trade Onake Ogre for the Hexproof Merfolk if they attack with everyone. And then, I think we'll double block over here. Right, opponent's got to disperse on the token. That's fine. And pick up a Paramantic Pilgrim. So we're not really going to make use of the haste ability since we're on the defensive here. And since we're probably going to have to trade, I think I would rather keep the 4-2 around. Since uh, that matches a, a bit better against future Merfolk tokens from Pioneers that they could have. So we'll uh, play Pilgrim, keep it back. And then maybe the Monster Sword can help us stabilize. Alright, another Water Trap Weaver. So we're gonna take 6 down to 6. And no land, so we don't get to play Monster Sword, but we do get to play Onik Ogre. Stay back, and technically if they don't have anything, we would fall to 2. But they have Sleep to finish us off. Alright, GG's. So never drew our fifth land, so didn't get to play Charging Monster Sword, but with double Water Trap Weaver and Sleep, they were gonna tempo us out if we were gonna rely on blocking with creatures anyway. Alright, now that we got to see the deck in action, it's time to upgrade our deck. And in the game we just played, we saw that we didn't really get to see a ton of Dragon Synergies in action, just because the deck doesn't have a ton of Dragons to begin with, and they're usually pretty expensive. So it takes a while before we get to them, so if we're up against an aggressive deck, we might never get to cast a dragon, so that's kind of what we're going to try and change. We're going to add more cheap removal to interact with opposing creature decks, so we can make sure that we get to the middle parts of the game, where we can start ramping into dragons, thanks to certain ramp effects that we get access to. So we'll uh, try and transform this into a powerful, synergistic dragon deck. So first step is we'll add a bunch of commons to the deck, and then we'll do the same with the uncommons, the rares and the mythic rares, and step by step we'll take out some of the worst cards to make room for the newly added cards. So first, taking a look at the commons we want to add to the deck, we're going to end up playing the full four copies of Tormenting Voice in our deck, which is a two mana sorcery which lets us draw two cards, but as an additional cost we also have to discard a card from our hand, and the final build of this deck that we have in mind will play multiple copies of legendary permanents like Planeswalkers and Legendary Dragons, so having Tormenting Voice to discard additional copies is useful, and also just the fact that we're playing some of these expensive dragons means that sometimes in the early game you just have to discard those more expensive cards to find more early interaction, and in the late game you can always use Tormenting Voice to get rid of an additional land to help you find more action, so it just helps you smooth out your draw, which is pretty useful. So we'll add all four copies of Tormenting Voice, 
And then we're also going to add two copies of Sheevan Fire, which is a one mana instant that deals two damage to target creature. And we can also pay the kicker cost of four generic mana. So for a total of five mana, we get to deal four damage to that creature instead at instant speed. So nice removal spell for the deck. So we'll add two copies of those. And to make room for the newly added cards, we'll end up cutting the three copies of Goblin Instigator, which is kind of weak and not super synergistic in this deck anyway. So those are fine to get cut. And with the addition of Tormenting Voice smoothing out our draws, we can also easily cut one mountain, since if we're lacking lands, then we can hopefully cast a Tormenting Voice to find more. And then our final cuts are going to be the two copies of Fairy Finish, which is just a bit of an expensive removal spell. And Sheevan Fire at uh, one mana is a nice efficient removal spell, dealing two damage. And then at five mana, dealing four damage still does most of what Fairy Finish tries to do, but still at a cheaper cost, so just a much more efficient removal spell than Fiery Finish. So we're back down to 60, now it's time to add some uncommons to the deck. And the first uncommon we're gonna add is two copies of Dragon Egg, which is gonna be our first dragon that we're gonna add to this build. Three mana for an O2 defender, and whenever Dragon Egg dies, make a 2-2 red dragon creature token with flying and essentially fire breathing so we can spend one red mana to give it plus one plus oh until end of turn so the more red mana we have the more powerful our dragon will become so we'll add two copies of dragon egg which does a few different things in the deck for now it's just a decent blocker that upgrades into a 2-2 flying dragon which is pretty useful so against any aggressive deck a dragon egg is going to be quite useful but then as we'll keep upgrading the deck and keep introducing more dragon synergies, we'll see that the fact that Dragon Egg is a dragon when it enters the battlefield and also makes a dragon token when the Dragon Egg dies, it will provide multiple triggers that care about the dragons entering the battlefield, which is going to be pretty nice as well. And the Dragon Egg also protects us from effects like the Elder Born, which is otherwise very backbreaking if we only have one big dragon in play. And then our next in common is going to be Lava Coil, a nice efficient removal spell dealing four damage for just two mana also exiling the creature if it dies so great against recursive creatures like rekindling phoenix which can be annoying if we're gonna rely on our flying dragons to attack our opponents just a very useful removal spell in the format right now dealing with a lot of four toughness creatures so we'll add all four copies of lava coil to the deck and that's the final uncommon that we need to add to make room for lava coil we'll end up cutting one shock since now that we've added Sheevan Fire and Lava Coil, we've got plenty of cheap removal to go around, so we can afford cutting one Shock. Shock does have the upside of being able to target players and also Planeswalkers, so it does have a little bit of upside at one mana over Sheevan Fire, but Sheevan Fire being a bit more flexible in the late game makes me want a, a split between the two. And with a card like Tormenting Voice, if you're in a matchup where Sheevan Fire is useless since the opponent doesn't play any creatures, you can just discard it and maybe keep Shock to go to the face or to a Planeswalker, but if you're in a creature matchup where you're past the first couple of turns, you might want to discard Shock and keep Sheevan Fire, where you can kick it for 5 mana to deal 4 damage later. So having the split can be pretty useful when you have a bit of card manipulation with cards like Tormenting Voice. And then we're also going to end up cutting 2 copies of Oneka Ogre. As we move away from early aggro, we're kind of replacing some of our cheaper creatures with cheap removal spells, so we can bridge the gap from the early game to the mid part of the game, where we can start casting our dragons, so you will see most of these cheap creatures disappear. And then we're also going to cut uh, three copies of Sure Strike, plays nicely with those high-powered creatures, but since we just got Onake Ogre and are moving away from those early creatures, cutting Sure Strike also makes sense. And instead of having to rely on Sure Strike to deal with opposing creatures, we can just use our cheap removal spells like Lava Coil instead. So now we're back down to 60 cards, and now it's time to add the rares to the deck. And the deck definitely wants quite a few rares, just because most of the dragon synergies you'll find at higher rarities. And the first rare we will add to the deck is additional copies of Demanding Dragon, as one of the better dragons in standard right now. 5 mana, 5-5 five, five, flyer, with a nice ability when it enters the battlefield. So we'll add all 4 copies of Demanding Dragon. Then the next rare we want to add is additional copies of Lethless, which is a nice payoff card for playing all those dragons to begin with, and a nice curve topper for the deck. And in a second we'll also introduce more ramp cards to help us cast Lethless ahead of schedule, which makes it even better. So we'll go up to three copies of Lethless, since of course it is still legendary, so there are some diminishing returns there. But with cards like Tormenting Voice we can always maybe discard an additional copy of Lethless if we drew too many. And then the next card we want to add to the deck is Dragon Sword, which is not only a nice way to ramp, but also a payoff card for playing dragons. 
a 3 mana artifact that says whenever a dragon enters a battlefield under our control, put a gold counter on Dragon Sword, and then we can tap Dragon Sword and remove a gold counter from it to draw a card, so it makes for a great card draw engine, and of course also works as a mana rock in that we can tap it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, so it helps us ramp and also plays nicely with some of our one mana instants, since on turn 3 we can play a Dragon Sword and still tap it for one red mana to cast a Sheevan Fire or a Shock for example. And Dragon Sword also works nicely with any dragons that make multiple dragons. For example, Dragon Egg, when it enters battlefield, it's a dragon and it will put a gold counter on Dragon Sword, but also when it dies and makes a dragon token, it will enter the battlefield and trigger Dragon Sword, since it doesn't care about any dragons being cast, but only about dragons entering the battlefield. And that also means that if you have a Lathless in play, for example, and to make additional dragon tokens, then those will also help you trigger Dragon Sword. So a great way to draw a ton of extra cards, and as we add some mythics to the deck we'll introduce even more dragons that make multiple dragons for Dragon Sword. So overall a very strong card in the deck and we'll add all four copies. And then the final rare we will add to the deck is an additional copy of Spitflame, which is a nice removal spell that we can keep getting back from the graveyard. Also synergizes nicely with Tormenting Voice, letting us discard Spitflame and then later maybe get it back. So we'll add a second copy. Don't want too many since it is still pretty expensive at 3 mana, but having two seems like a good amount. And now it's time to make some cuts to make room for the newly added cards to go back down to 60 cards. So we'll need to make 10 cuts. We'll end up cutting the Paramantic Pilgrim, since again I've mentioned we're gonna cut down on these early creatures now that we've replaced them with removal spells instead. We're also gonna end up cutting Vyashino Paramancer. Fits much better into a burn strategy instead of this Dragon Synergy deck that tries to get to the late game. And then despite having some synergy with dragons, the Kargan Dragon Rider can go as well, since we're not too interested in a 2 mana 2-2. Two -two. And despite being a dragon, Sparktongue Dragon can go as well, since we've replaced it with a much better 5 mana dragon, in the form of Demanding Dragon, so Sparktongue can go. So we're back down to 60 cards, and now it's time to add some mythics to the deck, and the first mythic rare we will add to the deck is Varix Bladewing. 4 mana for a 4-4 legendary dragon with flying, but it also has kicker for 3 mana, and if Varix Bladewing enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, we get to make Karox Bladewing a legendary 4-4 dragon creature token with flying. So for 7 mana we get 8 power and toughness in the air, split across 2 bodies, so pretty resilient against spot removal spells, and also very synergistic with cards like Dragon Sword, adding 2 treasure counters to the horde when we kick Varix Bladewing. So we'll add a total of 3 copies of Varix Bladewing, again also legendary, so don't want to overdo it, but we still have Tormenting Voice to help us discard additional copies, and in a second we'll introduce another way to discard additional copies. So we'll add 3 Varix Bladewing, and then the final card that we'll add to the deck is none other than Sarkhan. 3 mana for a Planeswalker, that starts out at 3 loyalty. The first plus 1 ability lets us discard a card, and if we do we get to draw a card, and this is a May ability so we don't have to discard a card, we can always plus 1 Sarkhan and not do anything, but uh, being able to discard a card is very useful since we do have quite a few legendary creatures, we might want to discard additional copies of Sarkhan if we don't need them, and can always discard lands in the late game too to find more action, so very useful ability. And then the second plus one ability is what really shines in this deck. We can add two mana in any combination of colors and spend this mana only to cast dragon spells. So we can play a turn three Sarkhan and then on turn four we can play our land drop, add two red mana and maybe cast a turn four Lathless, which is quite strong and then follow it up with more dragons. So Sarkhan helps us ramp and that can lead to some very explosive starts. And then the minus 7 ultimate ability, which is pretty doable in this deck since we have so much removal to protect our planeswalker and all our dragons will do a good job of protecting Sarkhan as well. And then if we do get to ultimate Sarkhan, we get to make 4 5 5 red dragon creature tokens with flying, which is also usually game winning and also very synergistic with our other dragon synergies. So we'll add all 4 copies of Sarkhan Fireblood to our deck. And now we need to make the last 7 cuts to our deck to make room for our new mythics. So Havoc Devils can go, since we replace it with a much better 4-drop in Varix Bladewing. And now we can also cut Charging Monster Sword, since we've got plenty of late game with our dragons already. And we've got Dragon Sword and Sarkhan to help us ramp into some of our more expensive dragons. So Monster Sword can go. Then we're also going to end up cutting Burning Sun's Avatar, since it's not very synergistic in our deck. And Meteor Golem can go as well. And then we're still keeping the two copies of Volcanic Dragon, just to have a decent curve topper that we can ramp into, and also just to have a critical mass of dragons for our various dragon synergies. And now we just have to add some finishing touches to our deck to kind of personalize it. I like adding Sarkhan as our picture, and then I also like changing the 
art on the basic land, so we'll put mountain in the search bar, type enter, and then under filters click reset, and then we'll get to see all the basic land arts, and I think this one fits nicely in this deck. And then we can just uh, add 24 copies and cut the other mountains, and then we'll have a nice personalized dragon deck. Alright, sweet, so that rounds out our Monorant dragon deck. Not the most competitive deck ever, but pretty fun and has some cool synergies going on. So now it's time to jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a okay opening hand if we can hit our third land drop. So we'll keep and uh, hope for the best here. Since the third land lets us play either Sarkon or Dragon Sword into maybe a Volcanic Dragon. Alright, turn on Storm Tamer. I'm probably gonna shock that right now. If they're on the mono blue tempo deck, I don't want them to untap with Curious Obsession and Dive Down. So let's just play it safe. Alright, so still waiting for the third land here. Alright, perfect. Opponent could easily have a spell pierce, but I think we're still jamming Sarkin. And then uh, we don't have to discard anything. But I think I do want to discard since we want to hit a land drop so we can play Volcanic Dragon next turn. And I would rather play Varix with Kicker if we can. So I think I'm actually going to discard a Dragon Sword. If we're up against a Mono Blue Tempo deck, card advantage is not as important as just getting on the board quickly. So I think we're fine uh, discarding the Dragon Sword. Could also discard the Spit Flame since we can maybe get it back later, but I kind of want to keep it as a clean answer to a Tempest Djinn. Let's discard Dragon Sword. Sheevan Fire is not bad either. Alright, a Psychic Corrosion instead, so never mind. So not a mono blue tempo deck after all. Well, we're just gonna play this Demanding Dragon now. Might demands power. And hit our opponent for 5 right away here. Put them to 15. And in the meantime, Sarkon keeps ticking up, so we're getting pretty close to ultimating that one as well. A land of the top lets us play Volcanic Dragon, otherwise we're probably just playing a Varix for 4 mana. Alright, that's a Lathless. Yeah, let's hit them for 5, see what happens, and then probably play Varix. Alright, Befuddle, sure. So that plays nicely with the Psychic Corrosion. Milling us for two. They are coming. Could also discard something and hope to draw into a land so we can still play Varix. But I would rather make sure that we can get our extra creature in play here. And one of the upsides of playing this deck is that you get to see cool animations on Varix Bladewing. Especially a kicked Varix Bladewing has some nice animations since you get two of them. Alright, River Sneak. So our opponent's deck seems a little bit all over the place. They've got these small tempo creatures and then the Psychic Corrosion plus Befuddle package. So not the most focused deck. We're just gonna Sheev and Fire here. So they don't attack our Sarkon. Alright, land lets us Volcanic. So we could hit them for 13 down to 1, or we can play Lathless. Playing Lathless is a bit sweeter, so we'll do that instead. I guess we'll attack first. And our opponents only have 4 mana, so next turn they won't be able to Rivers Rebuke us. And the next turn we'll be able to ultimate Sarkhan, which is pretty sweet. And Lathos can pump the entire squad here. Alright, GG's. They're not gonna let us ultimate Sarkhan, sadly. Oh well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand looks okay. Turn to Lava Coil. Turn 3. Probably gonna play the Dragon Sword before we play the Dragon Egg. So pretty decent against any aggressive strategy. And if we're up against a more controlling deck, Dragon Sword can provide a bit of card advantage. So overall a pretty balanced hand. Stitch our suppliers, or point on a graveyard deck. As we see Path of Discovery hit the graveyard too. Lava Coil's not a bad answer to Stitch our suppliers since we get to exile it. 
but I'm not too worried about killing the Stitcher Supplier, so we're just gonna play a land and pass the turn here. Then next turn play Dragon Sword, take one, and then maybe play a Dragon Egg, or could play Demanding Dragon right away, since we drew our fourth land. Although Demanding Dragon's a little bit awkward with a Stitcher Supplier. Alright, opponent with a Burglar Rat. Um, what do we discard? We could discard a land, if we think we're gonna draw a land in the next two turns. So we can still play Demanding Dragon. Yeah, I think I'll discard a land, since even in the worst case scenario where we don't draw another land, we still get to play Dragon Egg after we play Dragon Horde. So, that's still decent. If they make us discard again, probably discarding a Lava Coil. And playing Dragon Egg before playing Demanding Dragon also works out in case our opponent has something like a Playcrafter making us sacrifice a creature, because we'll gladly sacrifice a Dragon Egg. Opponent hits us for 2, down to 17. And a reassembling skeleton, that's fine. And more lava coils, alright, let's play this dragon egg. And I think we'll main phase draw with the dragon sword here, in case we draw land. Alright, Sarkon's not bad. And now the dragon egg can save 1 damage. Lava coil also a pretty good answer to reassembling skeleton. Alright, another tapped overgrown tomb. There's a land, so we could play Demanding Dragon if we wanted to. Of course, a little bit awkward when the opponent has a Stitcher Supplier that they're just waiting to sacrifice. Yeah, I don't mind that, so... We'll play Sarkon, we will plus discarding one of the Lava Coils, see what we draw, and go from there. Right, not our dragon sword, so we might wait to play the dragon until we can get both dragon swords in play. And I think we still get rid of a skeleton, although we could also exile the supplier. Exiling supplier is also pretty tempting. Sure. Alright, so they don't get the uh, death trigger from the stitcher supplier now. Alright, opponent has a costly plunder. I'm surprised they didn't sacrifice stitcher supplier in response, since they could have prevented the supplier from getting exiled, and therefore milled more cards. Alright, another Burglar Rat. Yeah, I think we're fine discarding Lava Coil. And Hired Poisoner, that's fine. So we will be able to play Dragon Sword plus Arkhan for 2 mana, and play Demanding Dragon. Ooh, now we drew a Lathless, does that change anything? So if we want to play Lathless before we play Demanding Dragon, we won't be able to play the Dragon Sword, so we kind of miss out on a bit of card draw but we do get to play a powerful dragon here, so that's probably worth it. So we'll add two mana. I will call the play Lathless. And then we get to draw with our Dragon Sword right away if we want to, so we'll uh, activate it right now. Alright, not our Lathless. So even if they kill the first one, we'll be okay. So we're doing pretty well here. Charnel Troll, alright, so that's one of their payoff cards for putting all those creatures in the graveyard. And we did get rid of all our Lava Coils, sadly. But by playing Charnel Troll with two mana up, they can always discard a creature to put a plus one plus one counter on it, so it's safe from an additional Lava Coil effect. Alright, untap, find the land. So I think the plan is still to play Dragon Sword into Demanding Dragon. Add two mana. Are you ready? And we'll play the land first so that we can draw a card with the Dragon Sword right away. Opponent will have to sacrifice a creature most likely. And we get to add a bunch of gold counters. And an extra token from Lathalus as well. So getting to see all the synergies. Opponent sacrifices the rat. And next turn we can just sink a whole bunch of mana into Lathless's ability to give our dragons plus one plus zero, oh, which might be enough to close out the game here. Alright, since we already played our land, might as well wait on the dragon sword's ability, just in case your opponent has a targeted discard effect. 
So if the Charnel Troll attacks, we're probably just gonna block with a Dragon Egg to get our Dragon Token, but we're not too worried if a Sarkhan dies here. And we just want to protect our Dragon so we can attack for lethal in the air. Alright, damage happens, Sarkhan down to 3. Get our Dragon Token, get some extra gold counters on the Dragon Swords. The token doesn't trigger Lathless, since Lathless mentions non-token dragons, otherwise you would have an infinite loop making infinite dragons, which would be a bit overpowered. Alright, Gravedigger can return Burglar Rats, that's fine. And then we should have Lethal in the air here, not much our opponent can have to stop us. Alright, they're declining to return the Burglar Rats, since they want to keep it for Charnel Troll, perhaps. And our opponent packs it in, yeah, we were just going to attack with all our dragons. And that was going to be game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a removal heavy hand, but we also have a tormenting voice that can potentially discard one of those if we don't need them in the matchup, so I think we'll keep. And let's see what we're up against. Turn on islands. Alright, let's uh, tormenting voice, and then I think we'll discard a shock. Alright, some uh, more lava coils. Hopefully hit a fourth land drop here for Varix. It's gonna be Drowned Secrets, right? So we're up against some sort of mill deck. So, in hindsight, lava coil may be worse than Shock would have been in this matchup. Yeah, let's play Varix. Looks like they have a counterspell, Assassin Scatter. Triggers Drowned Secrets. Alright, so we're lacking threats in this hand right now. Alright, we'll play a Dragon Sword. Which will let us cast a Volcanic Dragon next turn. To start applying a bit of pressure. Keeping Shock also makes sense if we want to have a way to trigger our Dragon Egg if we draw it. Since of course Lava Coil exiles Dragon Egg, whereas Shock and Spit Flame can kill it and give us a token. Don't mind discarding Lava Coil to Disinformation Campaign and play this Volcanic Dragon. And we'll wait to play Kick Blade Wing if we can. Opponent down to 16. And another Drowned Secrets. Alright, so the milling is gonna speed up significantly. And a Departed Deckhand. Seems a bit random here, but does trigger Drowned Secrets just fine. Alright, more Spit Flames. Could just play a 4-4 Blade Wing. Get to attack our opponent down to 12, next turn for 8 down to 4, and then maybe deal lethal, even through a removal spell. I think we'll draw first with the Dragon Sword, might change our decision here. Alright, Sarkhan. And we could Sarkhan plus for 2 mana play Blade Wing, or we could just discard a Spit Flame, Lava Coil the deck hand, and then next turn we can kick Blade Wing. I think that's better. So we'll discard Spit Flame. Another Dragon Sword could be useful too. Kill the deck hand, doesn't get exiled because it dies to its own ability before the Lava Coil exiles it. Hit them for 4 down to 12. Hope they don't Thunder Rasher us, so we get to play Kick Blade Wing here. Alright, Aldous Reborn. Could also sacrifice Sarkhan. That might actually be better. Do give up on the ability to play Kick Blade Wing guaranteed, but if we top deck a land, we can still play Kick Blade Wing. And we kind of want to keep up the pressure here. Alright, sure, let's uh, get rid of Sarkhan. Alright, no land sadly. We do get to play Dragon Sword into Bladewing, accumulate some more gold counters, or we could return Spit Flame. But I think getting the Dragon Sword in play is more valuable, gives us extra mana to work with. So let's do that. And then we can discard Tormenting Voice to the second chapter of Eldest Reborn. So we are presenting lethal next turn if they don't find interaction. So that's kind of the plan here. 
And that's also why waiting for Varix Bladewing seemed reasonable, since even if we played it as a 4-4, four -four, our clock was going to be the same if they don't have interaction. Could actually discard Spitflame 2 here, but in case your opponent has a flying blocker, I think we'll keep the Spitflame. So it looks like they have removal for Bladewing, it's going to be a deadly visit, letting them surveil and return campaign 2. Probably just a placeholder for Price of Fame, which would have only cost them 2 mana, since of course Varix is legendary. Picked up a land, so let's uh, draw with a Dragon Sword. See what we can find, another Sarkhan. Let's draw again. More Sarkhans. Alright, so next turn the third chapter of Eldest Reborn will happen. Probably letting them return a Lathless from our graveyard, or a Demanding Dragon, so could be in a bit of trouble here. For now we're just gonna play Sarkhan. And I think we'll discard another Sarkhan. <laughs> More lands. Right, let's get in for four. Opponent goes for Lathless. Mirror image to copy Lathless, that's uh, unfortunate. But it is legendary, so... They will get to create a token alongside Lethless herself, but they only get to keep one Lethless. So there's a token. Yeah, this is where having something like a Banefire as a finisher could be useful. Alright, let's hope to draw into a dragon here. More Sarkans. Alright, let's uh, spin the wheel. What know you of dragons? Yes. <laughs> let's see, do we want to keep the land at this point? Yeah, we already went through all our copies of Lathless and Volcanic Dragon, so we don't have any 6 mana dragons left in our deck. So we're fine discarding the mountain here. Oh, never mind, since of course... The Lathless that our opponent has in play is a mirror image, so we still did have one Lathless in our deck, which we happened to draw, which is nice. Um, but of course, had we discarded Spitflame, we would have been able to play Lathless right now, which would have been nice. But for now, we'll just uh, have to pass a turn. And hope they don't make us discard Lathless or counter it somehow. Unmoored Ego, alright, what are they gonna name here? Who knows? Right, opponent goes for Demanding Dragon. We had one copy left, which is now exiled. Fair enough. And are they going to go after Sarkhan? After casting this formation campaign, maybe. Alright, so another four cards milled. And we'll discard the Spit Flame. Alright, they are sending one token at Sarkhan. I think we'll have to let that one slide. Of course, by keeping Sarkhan, we can use the ability for mana, which can be useful, but keeping our 4 4 dragon seems more valuable. So let's play Lathless. Get back our Spit Flames. Probably should have played our land first, so we could have had a Dragon Sword at the ready. But we probably wanted to keep land in hand anyway for insurance against discard. So I guess this is fine. No attacks for now, but next turn we can set up something sweet. Whisper Agent. It's gonna mill us for four. They can get back campaign, play campaign. And we'll have three cards remaining pretty much. If they have a removal spell for one of our dragons. We're probably dead. If they don't, then we get to spit flame twice to kill one of their flyers. And we can also start deducing what cards we have left in our deck by looking at what's already in our graveyard here. Yeah, I think there's still one Varix Bladewing in our deck. And that's about it. I think we just go for the double spit flame on the mirror image, see what happens. 
All right, they did have a counter spell too. That's gonna make things a lot more difficult. All right, still a Varix blade wing left. All right. The problem here is we don't have the mana to play a Varix blade wing and still cast double spit flame. We're gonna get milled next turn anyway, so might as well draw. All right, Sheevan Fire, that should do it. Spit Flame, Mirror Image. Sheevan Fire. And attack with both. And that's just enough here. One card remaining in Library. Killer Opponent for Xaxes. That was a close game. Sweet. All right, that's gonna do it for this upgrade guide. I will also point you in the direction of a Grixis Dragons video where we explore a three color build of the Dragons deck, which is kind of the next evolution in building a Dragon deck. So if you're interested in an even more powerful version of the Dragon deck, that's the video to check out. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.